Goats in a bad way. I'll give you the first pick. Who's gonna, the first one you got? You're gonna give me Go the, the first pick. I'll give you the first pick. Man, um, okay. I, I don't know why. Not ready for this? I wasn't ready. Y'all. I was expecting to answer a question and then kind of get my thoughts ready. But it's okay. I could do this either way. I'm not worried about it. I think I'm gonna go goats in a bad way. My first one. I, I'm gonna go Andy Reid. Andy Reid. That's gonna be my first one. Andy Reid. Eric Bieniemy for the offensive game plan in general. I am. That's going to be my first one. I am shocked still, like I said to start the show, that they came out with a bad offensive line against that D-line and really had limited ways to throw the ball short and get the ball out of hand, out of Mahomes' hands. It's like they expected to, to see the same defense they saw in Week 12. They thought they were going to see the same attack, and it was not, and there was just never an adjustment and really uh, – you know, just a lack of a game plan to attack the way the Bucks attack them. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and that was on my list. I mean, for me, the most obvious one that stands out that helped get the Chiefs off the rails early was Tommy Townsend. Yeah. You can't you can't show up at the Super Bowl and and perform like a high school punter with twenty seven and twenty nine yards. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's the Super Bowl. And, and there is an argument to be made that, well, here's what happens when you have a punter that you never use, and all of a sudden you got to rely on him in the biggest game in the world, and, uh, you know, he's going to freak out a little bit. Well, he did. And I, it's a shame that it happened, but, hey, you got one job. Kick the football as far as you can with some direction from time to time and to have a couple of shanks like that. And then he had that one drop. He dropped the ball, and it, oh he was my lucky God. And it wasn't crushed, crisis averted. He crushed that one, but it ended yeah. up being a penalty, and then he got the ball back and he hit another crappy one, right? Yep. So not good. Not, not good. good. I don't know that it's enough to get him fired, but it, but it definitely wasn't. It's, good. it's bad enough to get him uh, goats in a bad way. All right, yeah. round two. All right, round two. Man, they're just the you know the the offensive and defensive line. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to Hill and Kelsey. I'm throwing them both on there. And again, I know it was a tough day for them, and I don't want to blame Kelsey the, had 133 yards. I don't want. I know, but it wasn't enough in the competitive part of the football game. I it was a, it was, you know. And again, like I said, the game plan didn't set it up so set it up to where they were open a ton. But I'm I'm just going go to the bad way because of the two plays, the two plays that were big plays and. They're superstars, and you were playing a team that was playing better than you at that moment on Sunday. You needed to make some plays to help your football team. And Tyree Kill with the drop touchdown pass, which was just an out-of-this-world throw. I mean, just a one-arm rubber band flick, 30 yards, weird body position, and it went through Tyree Kill's hands and hit him in the face. And then the third down by Travis Kelsey. When you felt like, hey, the Bucks had the momentum, but the Chiefs are still hanging around, and you just thought, like you said earlier, it just it, maybe they can get it go. We're just waiting for that one or two plays to jumpstart them, and maybe that could have been it. But those are two big moments where could have swayed the game by two of their best players, and they didn't come through in the clutch. I'm going to go with Bashad Breeland, and I'm old yeah. enough to remember, as I tweeted the other night, when Bashad Breeland was the guy who was getting torched by Antonio Brown week one Monday night football, Pittsburgh, Washington, right. when we all were wondering why the hell isn't Josh Norman traveling with Antonio Brown. They kept putting Brown on Breeland, and Breeland got torched all night. Breeland got better as a player since then, but uh, hey, he, he was the weak link in that secondary on Sunday night, and, and even though the penalty was questionable, it was that pass interference call on him when Mike Evans went down and the Buccaneers got themselves in position for the touchdown that made it 21 to six. No doubt. And the, the defensive holding was on him on the tipped interception too. They called that on him, you know, which I, I really don't agree with that call, but yeah, uh, tough day. And again, that to me is something we didn't really hit on. There must've been some real conversations with the Bucks coaches uh, with the referees about Kansas city holding and doing those things like that. You know, there must have and which hey, listen, the game against the Bills in the AFC championship game, they let them play that game, and maybe that's what they saw and didn't like. I mean, I I, I there's a part of me that wants to go with the refs, but we've talked about it enough and I'm not gonna deal with it in either way. And I don't want to take away from Tampa being the better team. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs D line. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs D line because to me that was, you know, one thing we didn't get to hit on and the great reason of why the Bucks offense had so much success is the fact that they ran the ball so successfully and never got into third and long a whole lot to where, or second and long to where Spags and that Chiefs defense could do all their crazy stuff and blitzes and disguises and all that. 
They never were able to do that. And then because of the run game, it simplified Kansas City, and they had to start playing defenses to stop the run, and they started getting gashed. And that, to me, I mean, that Bucks O line, big, physical, everything like that. But we've seen that Chiefs D line stop Derrick Henry, the 49ers, the Browns, all these teams, and they couldn't stop these big suckers in Tampa. And that, that, that was a, a big issue in the game. And I got to go Chiefs O line. I mean, we got one game to draw these goats yeah. from. And in the offensive line, we, we saw it. Sure. It's well established. And, you know, maybe it wasn't as bad as it looked. And Patrick Mahomes tried to throw him a little bone yesterday. But it was without Eric Fisher. Without Mitchell Schwartz, you've got Mike Remmers and Andrew Wiley at tackle, and uh, it, 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 it opened the floodgates early and often. But, you know, it all ties together with what you're saying earlier with Andy Reid. They didn't do enough to help those guys. Uh, it, it just it, it was stunning to see a Chiefs team that we have become so accustomed to being dominant get dominated and have no answers and have a game. Of all the worst possible times, you could have just one of those – Stuff Thinkers, happens, right. although other than stuff happens type of a game. That's not the one you want to have that moment in. That's what's amazing to me that it happened then. Yeah. The biggest stage in the sport. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.